Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. <laughs> and I'm Aaron. I was worried for a minute there. Don't worry. <laughs> um, today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about a pity. All right. A pity a fool. Yeah. <laughs> Don't join Cobra. Sorry. Why do you think people name games like this? I know why they named this one like this, but I'll save that for later. Because, like, I think about another shooter. Okay. Agony. Yeah. Are you going to buy a game that promises you agony? Yes. No, I liked agony myself. It's like the guy, they should have called, remember Pipe Mania? Remember the box yeah. art for that? The yeah. guy screaming and horror and pain? Yes. They should have combined agony with that box art. See, you don't get the whole cool guy box art and name thing. Explain it to me. So, you got, okay, you've got Psygnosis here, publishing mm-hmm. this bad boy, right? Right. This isn't Happy Dream Fun Land that's publishing it's it. It's not They're going to have Dream a bunch Fun of Land. sharp metal letters, bent like knives and daggers for the logos, and they're going to have some cool, multicolored, rainbow, trippy album cover crap on Roger it. Roger Dean, baby. You're not going to call the game like uh, Mr. Fluffy. What about Butterfly Force? No good. What? Are you kidding me? No. no. That's what I would have called this no. game. No. Agony. Because, listen, you're in that game is about the intense agony of that guy as he, sco- as he flies across the landscape in owl form to like take care of business. And the, and the pain he suffers is, and all the trials and tribulation he goes through to get to the end. That's cool guy stuff. Mm. Dark, edgy. You don't. You is, need, that's what you need. Is it like that pinball fantasy like table with the upside down cross? It's exactly like. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for explaining that to me. I, if now we, I understand. We better. need a psychosis style logo, and then we can when, when we debut it, we'll come in just like the Road Warriors. Yeah. With big spikes. We and have crap. to put a Z in our name. Welcome of to S. Amigos, <laughs> brother. Yeah, like something like that. Is that something every wrestler does? <laughs> That's right. Refer to everyone else. Go like brother? that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to the Road Warriors? Uh, well, Road Warrior Hawk died. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so not good things. No. Animal's still around. He comes. Is he still on the time. circuit? Yeah, he does appearances and stuff. Yeah. How many pictures do you have with you and Animal? None. I've never, I've never met him. Really? No, I've never met him. Now, what is, what is his? Christian I wasn't a name? huge Road Warrior fan. His real name is, is uh, it's, I think it's, it's something Laurinaitis. Lance? No, because his son was a big-time uh, football player at Ohio State. Hmm. And his uh, uh, brother is John Laurinaitis, who was the who was also known as Johnny Ace, who was the... Uh, the late, great Johnny Ace. No, he's not dead. Oh. Uh, Johnny Ace was the uh, one of the big wheels in WWE for a long time. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, been, he's worked all over so the world. So it's in the family, as it is. Yeah. The, he, the, the guy at Ohio State, after his uh, college football career, he didn't transition into the business. No, he? he went to the pros. I don't think he ever, I don't think he ever wrestled. Mm. Who could say? You know, I don't know. He there really be. haven't been any NFL guys that have been real big wrestling fans, like out wrestling fans, tons, right? Tons and tons of guys that have been fans of wrestling and then either went into wrestling or really? made guest spots in wrestling. Dude. God, you put me on the spot here. Um, I don't Kevin that. Green is a good example of a guy He's that a did. Comedian. Lawrence Taylor, you know him? LT? Yeah, he wrestled Bam Bam Bigelow in the main event of WrestleMania. Are you here. serious? I swear to you, yes. Man, where have I been? Okay, that, that shut you up on that one, didn't right. it? Never I test the master. I concede. All right. Why don't we test the other master, Aaron? <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> Is that a euphemism or something? <laughs> that means we're going to talk about what Dreamcatch has oh. been writing about this week. Okay, I can go. I can go down that road. Good <laughs> God, what a transition, boat! How long have you been doing this? So, <laughs> you know, we've got to look into this game. I was reading this article. So uh, this is uh, this is an article that DK did on a game uh, that is called Wipeout. Okay, now I've heard of this game. Have you? It's a racing game. Well, no. Oh. See, that's what a dumb guy might say. That's why he wrote this article to clear mm. these sort of misconceptions up. There is a really trippy racing game called Wipeout. By the way, did you ever play that on the PlayStation? Oh, yeah, man. So my buddy got this. You know there's an Amiga release of this. If you have, like, the ultra, super, duper, whammy not, not Amiga. Not official release. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. There is no freaking way dude. that the White well, House dude. developer would be dude. like, yeah, this thing sold six zillion copies Listen, on the PlayStation. No, no, Let's put this, out was, this was a parallel development cycle. Hmm. And get this, you've got to have the, the, the big deal to play it. Special cards, and you know, I'm, it's just all kinds of crazy crap to play it. Anywho, uh, wipe out. My buddy had it for the PlayStation. He had one of those projection TVs when they just came out. You know, mm -hmm. we could put it on the wall. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes, that was I some crazy that was stuff. It was right? super trippy. Yeah, but anyway, I digress. This isn't that. So, from the way, and I haven't played this, and I can tell you why in a minute, but the, the way this is described, it's sort of like a three dimensional uh, Tron, effectively. Uh, it was, it's like Tron from the first person perspective or third person perspective. Real bizarre looking game. But one of the reasons that I haven't played this and, and I haven't even heard of it is that to to uh, use it, you have to make a special disc for it. There's a lot of weird disc swapping. And as of now, there's not a WHD uh, load version of this really? either. So mm. this is something we might be able to try on the Amiga 1000 over there. You know what I'm saying? Because you can actually set up like blank discs and stuff on the uh, GoTech. Mm -hmm. We could actually we have to give this a shot. But it looks it looks interesting, you know. It doesn't necessarily sound great, but <laughs> to be honest with you, but it, Amiga Computing gave it eighty one percent. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. You know, so yeah, I'll, it could be worse. So. I do want to I do want to inform our listenership that if you have not been over to everythingamiga.com here race recently, uh, I've totally redone the site. Uh, the site is uh, totally uh, new and. Uh, and a lot of the cruft has been taken out. We're having some internet issues the, here the, right a now. A lot of the what? The cruft. <laughs> You've never heard that I've before? never heard the cruft. The cruft? Oh, it's a, I think it's a British term. You don't need the internet to actually perform any of your podcasting duties. They just keep right no, on trucking. No. Um, and so, but anyway, as you can see, we have we have no internet right now. Hillbilly ISP strikes again. <laughs> um, so uh, that is, uh, but anyway, everything I've, uh you can check out our latest videos. All of the articles are now listed in chronological order. Everything's easier to get to, so check That's it out. That's great. Yeah, when you told me you had linked all that up, good job. Who helped you on that? That was, uh, you know, Jason Warren's, of course, the yeah. man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, He's yeah. done it all. And, of course, I did the majority of the work myself. Good job, Bo. Uphill both ways in the dark. Bo, your programming and, and uh, skills involving web pages and whatnot are unparalleled. It's, 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 it, they still speak of me in the upper <laughs> echelons of the W3 consortium. Yeah, they speak of you, all right. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> But yeah, catch uh, check Dreamcatcher out. Also, you release some new videos this week. And if you don't live in West Virginia and you have a decent ISP, you can go check those out at your leisure. Yeah, absolutely. As well as the Amiga News for this week. Because guess what? We can't get to it because we have no internet right now. <laughs> I love <laughs> so, it. Uh, we might fit in the Amiga News later on in the show uh, after we speak about this week's game. Let's speak on this. All right. Oh, oh, Let's do it. Every Let's week. do it. All right. This week's game is Aaron. A pity, uh, a pity, yeah, a pity I, to fool. Yeah, I can't it, help. I can't say that. say that. And yeah, I never thought of it, but now I won't be able to <laughs> not think of it. So, you know, a pity, uh, I, I had actually have played this one before. Really? Yeah. Okay. Now, have you you ever played this one? Never. I mean, okay. I, not before this week. But I, but this was the first time I seriously sat down and and really gave, gave it the college, college try. try. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So this game uh, released in '92. Mm -hmm. This was late in the game, as you know. Uh, I mean, depending on your perspective. Yeah, if, you, uh, if people will literally punch you in the face if you say that it's someplace like Amiga Ireland. Well, here's my here's my thing, right? Once you get into the into the or we early, call it the VGA era. Once you get to the early to mid '90s, that's to me American. In it fact, was pretty over. much once you hit '90, you're in deep the trouble. Dream was yeah. Over, yeah. So anyway, uh, release in '92, two discs, both. Uh, and this was published by Blue Byte Worldwide, which Blue Byte, of course, also makes my favorite tennis game. Uh, you recall, as I always mention, every time their name comes up. And was uh, also you know, published in various places by different people. Uh, developed by an outfit called uh, Keiko uh, a Division of Audio. So that's A period, U period, D period. You know, there's a lot of, that is. And I'm sure you're going to tell me about this, but there's a lot of sort of Japanese-inspired stuff in this game. Yeah. And Keiko, a very Japanese-sounding name. But yeah. these guys are not Japanese. German. Right? German. German as German could be. If you look at the staff. You're German gonna... Japanophiles. So... The, I had never heard of this Keiko before. Mm -hmm. And here's what they've done. All right, you've got your Flamingo Tours. Sounds okay. pretty good. You've got Gem X, Super Gem Z. 
All right. And software manager, the least attractive sounding of the boy. The software planet. manager. And the Sign thing is, I that think one. that may be a game. I'm not 100 percent sure he had a game <laughs> graphic. I didn't try it out. Uh, so uh, the, the uh, people at Worklist include uh, the co or the coder Kai Tuber. All these Japanese names, mm. by the way. You've got uh, Matthias Ensman and Peter Theerloff. Now these guys. Uh, you see a lot of people in here that worked on Turk and Three, for example, and uh, more, or more. Uh, the, the graphics were done by a fellow named Frank Mats Matzi, and then the musician, of course, the ever-present Chris Hughesbeck. He was in high demand. Listen, I just wrote down all the games we've covered that he did that was just on this list: BC Kid, Battle Isle, Great Great Yana Sisters, Jim Power, R Type, Monkey Island, Tur all the Turks. Unbelievable. He's, Unbelievable. <laughs> we've, this guy comes up, he's like a bad penny. He's, yeah. he's, come, he's, a, he's a great penny. Here's the shocking part of this game, Boat. Hardware for this thing, ECS, OCS. This will run on, as far as I know, this will run on a stock anything. Now, with that said, I could not get this to run on my Amiga, <laughs> my Amiga 1200. I tried and tried and tried. the ultimate copy protection. I had three different is. versions, and none of them would work. So I, don't, I, think was, I think possibly it was a PAL thing. Mm. So I'd wager we'll have more luck on your 600 if Absolutely. we try it. Um, so, um, what's the scoop on Aphidia? Well, uh, the backstory. I'm, did you watch the little opening video that this I thing did. had? I, I knew that there's a, a guy, there's a, a girl that's sick. Let me let a, me try to elaborate okay. just a wee bit. Uh, the story's about a uh, guy named Akiro. Okay. His wife, Yuri, has been poisoned by a bad, evil a bad guy dude. called Hexe. Mm. All right. H E X A A E. Well, when you combine the X's with a lot of vowels, yeah, what that do you get there? Evil. Yeah. No, <laughs> see, I thought you were actually going. No, it's the secret. I thought you were going to pronounce it. He's an evil lord of black magic. Yeah. You know, uh, so he uses his evil magic to send a bunch of bees over to sting uh, Yuri. Not cool. No. All right, and so. Yuri has to go and find the antidote to come back and, and save his wife. So he transforms into a bee and then goes to find the antidote. And that's where this game starts. So, uh, a, a, and it, there's a full intro. It's a, I mean, it's not animated, but it's... I well, mean, it's some a, of it's not animated. Well, <laughs> the bees, for example. Yeah. That, they go like this. And there's the, like rain coming down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Uh, with all that I masking, mean, this is good as Super Frog. It, well, no, I like Super Frogs that draw a lot better. Well, um, with all that, and it's all done in the anime style. Yeah, it we is. We should probably address this before we go on. So, because Boat mentioned it. So, uh, is this game Japanese? No, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the least bit Japanese. Again, it was made in Europe, in in Germany. So. They wanted to make this look like an arcade conversion. Mm -hmm. So they put in a Japanese title. They put all that crap in it. Not at, a bad marketing maneuver. And so if you look at the title, and this is pretty well documented everywhere in the game, uh, the real name of this game, if, in terms of the Japanese, is Aphidia 2. Because you see the big two Roman numeral 2 in there. Oh, I never put that together. But there isn't a first, there isn't an Aphidia 1. And actually, and according to Hughesbeck, the two in the name was a gag, this is a quote, a gag to provide for some excitement. <laughs> Unquote. So in other words, he has no idea. Right. No, that's what he said. And also, the Japanese they put in there was wrong. Oh. Instead of being called a pitya, it's a bija. A-B-I-J-A. I bid you to come with me. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know the difference, no. but I thought that was funny. Something else I should mention, uh, this game came out, it's funny, <laughs> how ironic, since we just talked about this. This game came out the same month as Project X and Agony. Oh my gosh. 92 was a big year for that shooters. That was the year on the of the shooter. Yeah. The year of the shooter. So let's get into it. You, you are basically a B with B powers. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the first level will start you in a garden or a backyard. And so you're surrounded by giant blades of grass and this flowers. This is like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Right. Uh, I mean, this, would, this is what the world would look like to a B, yeah. presumably. Now, uh, this has that R type or Alcon sort of. Uh, no, not like. Well, it's it, it's it exactly Alcon? like Alcon. Yeah, basically, here's how it works. You pick up little flower uh, symbols, right? And every time you do that, it, there's a scale at the bottom that advances up a rung, mm -hmm. like a ladder. 
And so every time you get an extra one, you'll go up another run. Okay. And when you hit the space bar, second button, whatever you have rigged up, because mm -hmm. it gives you a several control options, you'll pick whatever whatever power uh, is at the bottom of the screen. So I'm, I'll go over what these are. The very first power is a speed up. It's pretty simple. Second power is as a bomb. It, your guy, when he shoots, he'll drop a bomb. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, right? The third power up the line is a spread shot. And so he shoots, just shoots in a spread. Then the fourth one is lightning, all right? There's lightning bolts. Then the fourth one is plasma pulse. It's a it's a kind of a really cool looking kind of chain of shooting. The fifth one is a drone. One, two, three, four, five, six one is a drone. And the drone is a little bee or a tinier bee that is beside you shooting. It's like a sweat bee. And we'll get <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. The seventh one is a shield, which the shield uh, is there to give you like uh, makes it so you can take shots because okay? your B has no ability to do that. And then the last thing, and this is kind of amusing, is a speed down. <laughs> so you can yeah. actually use. Well, I mean, because sometimes I think the action will be so hot that you want to dial it back. A well, bit. that's true, but also I think it's there to punish you if <laughs> if you go too far. You screw up, yeah. basically. Now, um, well, the game is kind of a pushover, so they need oh, to yeah. put something in there. So, too. first thing, well, let me ask you before I keep droning on. What were your initial? Droning on, huh? yeah. Ha, ha. <laughs> that's why we're making. That's why we're making it big here in this podcast. The world. What What were your initial impressions of the game in terms of its presentation, of the, the uh, tunes, and the uh, way it looked when you fired it up? Well, the first thing I did was I fired it up and I played one game. Yeah. Okay. And I said, okay, I'm going to go and see if there's an ECS OCS version of this to compare it. All right. And what did I find on Amiga? This is an ECS OCS game. This game is beautiful. Uh, this, the, yes, it, it's the, the 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 it's so colorful. It's so colorful. None of the a lot of times with ECS OCS games because of the limitations of the chips supposedly is you can't have colorful backgrounds and colorful sprites. There's something that prevents that, and that was the the issue with uh, with Kid Chaos in particular. I remember uh, this game is beautiful, beautiful all the way through. The music. I mean, it's not my cup of tea. It's Euro Dance Trash, but no, I think there's some good mix in there. But it's it's it suits the game well. Yeah, it suits. You the need game some well. upbeat, to up, and it's really it's just a this is a stylized. I don't. I think you're underselling the style of music. I don't I, calling it Euro Dance Trash. I mean, I think it's a stylized, uh, uh, quick tune. I mean, it's not just like no. You know, it's, it's I think it's unique, and it's, it starts off with that kind of a clarion call. Mm -hmm. Do 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 do. Yeah, that's bah, true. Bah. That's true. I yes. rescind my Eurodance there you go. comment. It could be a lot worse. Um, it was really good, I thought. Now, uh, th th those were my first impressions. Yeah. Um, listen, I you I know you wrote a, a tweet this week where you badmouth AGA. I didn't badmouth it. I just called it horrible. Yeah, that's badmouth. Oh. And now, normally, I'd be like, "Both you complete and utter doofus." However, if you're ever going to see a game. That makes you wonder what was because this you can play this right on Amiga One Thousand. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, uh, this game looks great. It looks great. It plays fast. It's smooth. It's got very detailed background. Huge sprites. Here, here's massive. What I, here's ones. what I look for in a shooter. Okay, I want varied environments. Mm -hmm. Okay, check. I want not only Starfield. Okay, I want animated enemies. And I want variety of enemies. Yes. Okay. I know the main guy is going to look good. The main, the, your main ship. There's no game where your main ship doesn't look good. It's how you know how much work do they put into the little piddly enemies? The the uh, who are who are the guys that you, the 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 mulkies? How do they, what what kind of what kind of, uh, build, what kind of you mean to build Randy Mulkey? Yeah. What, what, yeah. What kind of uh, they're pasty, blonde, pale, right? Pink. Like yeah. you know what kind of work do they put into the jobbers? Is what I'm saying. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there are a lot of mulky s games. Yeah. Listen, everything you said, normally I, everything you say is garbage, and I think you're an idiot. But you're not wrong here, Boat. Uh, this game is has a ton of enemies. It's two discs, by the way. That's astounding. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, uh, plenty of big levels. You've got sub bosses. That's the thing. This game, any game, can have a boss at the end of a level or a few sub bosses. This game's got bosses coming at the yin yang. All different, all unique, and all suited to the environment. I mean, for the most part, you've got uh, giant, you've got giant insects, you've got snakes, you've got moles, you've got 
Uh, there's one, if you get out of the sewer, you're fighting stuff that's coming out of a dead rat. <laughs> you go into stuff. You do, you've do. you got all kinds of crazy uh, bosses. And then at the very end of the game, there's a boss rush where you've got, you've got to fight like five or six bosses in a row. All are different. Spoiler, I did not make it that far. Well, I, I didn't either. Spoiler, no one can get that far. That's the problem. So... Uh, when it comes to the when it comes to bringing the goods and oh we should mention uh, also violating all the rules of of, of Amiga games that we've heard uh, yes this has great graphics yes it runs on the original chipset and yes it has continual in-game music on top and of the sound, sound. effects yes. yeah so it's don't give it. me that crap the Amiga because of the sound channels good <laughs> It's crap. It's well, lazy programming, well, and I'm tired of it. I think part of it. This, this game is, shows that everything we want can be done if the right person is at the Well, home. I think also they were advancements in technique. That Listen, was man, it's 92. It's not freaking 1997. Right, but I'm just saying, I, I, I think that's probably part of it. I think early on, that, I mean, and I'll give them that in the, for the first couple of years. Like, okay, we didn't know we could do that, but... Yeah, I'll give it that until 1986. Well, you're beating off. Did you see what was out there? We looked at what was out in 85 and 86. <laughs> um, so, so check marks on all that stuff. Great music, great graphics, great background, scrolling multiple layers. Mm -hmm. That's all great. Animated now, backgrounds. Animated by the way. backgrounds and great enemies. Mm -hmm. So that's all great. So how does it play? Well, I I like the ability to upgrade your uh, your weaponry and your and your defensive mechanisms. It all works well. Again, for me. I know it's not the first game to do it, but for me, it's, I, I always associate this with Alcon, mm -hmm. which I like that upgrade system. It gives you multiple ways to use a second button or to, I use the space bars the way I did it, but you, your mileage may vary on how you use that second button. Uh, so I like that. I like the weapons you get are cool. Now, uh, um, how was the game? It's rock hard. Is this the hardest uh, shoot 'em up we've played? No. Not even, not even close, but it's difficult. Uh, it's not super duper frustratingly difficult, but it's hard, really hard. Get you a trainer. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I did. And we, even with unlimited lives, I could I had all kinds of trouble getting anywhere. I had to basically turn off glitch detection to see any of this game. I, had, I mean, I could get through some of it, but not very much. Uh, so once again, what, the problem is when you've got all the, and this is a game that delivers throughout the game. The first level is in, the, is in that backyard. It's really the first three levels. They're split in like five stages. I think it's three levels per stage. The second level takes place in sort of a submerged area where it's half underwater. It's awesome, isn't it, Boat? That, I thought you that know, area was it, really it, I, cool. I thought it, it's, it's quite hilarious because normally, um, you know, when I first saw the water, I was like, okay, the water is death. I can't go under there. Right. And then I was like, okay, the water is probably going to kill me long term if I stay under there. Yeah, no. you can. Your bee has amazing powers. Your bee can fly normally under the under the water. Yeah, and we'll get into that and say uh, about that. But in terms of the, the second stage, is probably the first two stages of this are absolutely gorgeous. I think the whole game is gorgeous. It is, but those two stages in particular are really nice. Um, you've also got a, a uh, the third stage is a sewer, and it's. <laughs> So it gets less attractive, but <laughs> you get into some really weird enemies down there. I mean, again, they, they cater the enemies to the area. Like in the second level, you get all kinds of crazy fish enemies, mm -hmm. which is cool. Some huge sprites, you know, which which are remarkable. Yeah. Uh, the sewer I level. Mean, think about this game. It, you know, ever since you said that, I can't stop thinking this game runs on an Amiga 1000. Yeah. And think how many copies <laughs> of the real Bruce Lee we've seen that only run on a vampirized 080 18 gigabytes of RAM upgraded Amiga, and this runs on a stock 1000. It is it is remarkable. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the the so the sewer level is interesting. Like I said, I want to mention the uh, like I said the bit where you fight the junk coming out of that dead rat is disgusting. There's also a segue where you go. There's a there are weird bonus stages when you complete these levels. Yeah. Did you get Did you try any of those? So the first one you are it's a forced scrolling um, side scrolling affair, uh, where you are trying to, uh, pick up angels and avoid demons. Yeah. Um, which is, was weird. Yeah, it was. Uh, there's another one where you are under the ground and you're trying to navigate these very, very narrow caverns. It almost felt like blood money as at least fun as that I was, was That one looked, that one, uh, I didn't get to try that. Yeah, one. That, that one I only saw. I didn't get to try that one. But, um, but they're, they're sort of fun diversions from the main sort of, you know, just fire, hammer on the fire button. There's also secret areas. There's area where you go, like there's one area where you go in a fish. I mm -hmm. saw that. There's, so that's cool that they thought to put some extra uh, extra types of levels in. Yeah. Uh, the in boss fights there's they are pretty unique. Mm -hmm. You know, again the 
All right, we're, we're right now as we're talking, we're watching video of this is, that is attached to the video side, and there's a there's a level where you find this giant fish that takes up like three screens long. Right. It's magnificent looking. The color, the detail on all these bosses are off the charts. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this the best boss fight game we've ever? I think it's by far. I can't think of. I any mean, Shadow of the Beast has such huge bosses, but I mean, this is. I think these are right there. Yeah. I mean, these are remarkably yeah. good uh, bosses. Uh, so you once you get through the sewer. Uh, you go, um, you go into a like a machine area, and you actually transform yourself into sort of like a mechanical bee. Mm -hmm. And you it's go into a good this, touch. And one thing about this area that's quite remarkable is in the is the backgrounds. We talked. Remember when we played uh, when we first played Adam's Family, and we we were lamenting the, moon, the lack of backgrounds. That's right. This, and of course, all all of the all of the Amiga apologists come out and say, well, the, there's no way that they could have put the backgrounds in because of X, Y, and Z. And this game puts all those thoughts to rest because this game. I was I, I spent a lot of time. This was part of the tweet that I made. I made this this graphic of of this particular level. And not only are the backgrounds animated, but they are like the tile set because it is a repeating tile set. But the tile set is huge, and it's laid out in such a way that the gears you know are just rotating in different ways, and it's a very very convincing illusion. Then when you lay the huge full color sprites on top of that. It's a it's it's an amazing effect, and it looks just as good as any two D games ever looked ever. It is remarkable. Yeah, it's remarkable. And we should mention on the first level, you even got uh, uh, there's blades of grass and daisies mm -hmm. that go by. In the there's a lot of foreground stuff, yeah, which is neat. Uh, and uh, on the sewer level, you've got stuff laying on the in the bottom of the sewer. Like at one point, one of the end bosses is a, is coming out the bottom of a Pepsi can. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a pack of smokes that stuff. Right. It's, it's, the, I will say the sewer level is the least att attractive in terms of the way it's built, but it's still it's a sewer. It's right, right is what it's it is. not. It's not supposed to be that, that 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 level with all the gears is impressive. Mm -hmm. And you're right, that tile set looked great. Yeah. And so if that puts that to bed, there's no de no doubt that they could have put all that stuff into Adam's family, mm -hmm. among others. But I mean, I, I couldn't believe that. It was beautiful. And then uh, uh, once you get past that the that level, the final level is the is the is the but is the boss rush. Where you fight five different bosses uh, on your way to the end of the game. Um, let's talk about the you, the character you play, the B. Uh, this is, I think, one of the stupider parts of this game. I n understand the aesthetic they were going for here uh, with the B, but you're right. The B going underwater, it doesn't make any sense. No. A lot. Of, why is the B shooting? Why stuff? do you need to transform yourself into a B? Why can you not just shrink down, Ant Man style? Well, I, my my bigger issue is. I just wouldn't make the character a B. Why don't I just make it the guy shooting something? You well, know, you, you've got to make it something that can naturally fly. But what they should have done is done flood style, where when you go underwater, your B dons a little snorkel mask. Well, that's what I'd be into. I, I, don't get me wrong. This isn't the, this isn't like a deal breaker, but it is. It struck me over and over again how dumb it, it was. It took me out of the universe. That, a that bit. this thing is the, the B is shooting. Yeah. The B, it's kind of weird, and it the B's is. underwater. But still, it's not a deal breaker. Well, yeah, I mean, think about agony. Your owls shooting stuff too. It's, yeah, it, it'd have been done. Yeah, um, there are so many flourishes and beautiful, like little items in this game, and little and just clever things that they did to make the world look more interesting. They use all the old tricks that you see. They use like the the uh, 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 little sequ the sequenced or what do they call them? section snakes and mm -hmm. crap like that. Mm -hmm. They use little fogging effects. There's a bit where you, in fact, it's coming up right now actually, where you go across a poison bottle. If you get in that poison, it flips the screen upside down. Yeah. You know, which is really, really a, a cool look. It's a cool effect. It's like it happens like that. You know, ah, you know, when I was playing this and watching it, I kept telling myself, why is it this game? more talked about than right it is. exactly why is this game not shadow of the beast why is this game not agony i mean we what is it and i'll tell you what it is okay i've got an idea but what it's do you the got box art i didn't see it's the box that art roger dean psygnosis overrated crap that psygnosis put out all the time on the amiga it sold a million copies because the box art looked really cool nobody bought this because they could tell it for what it was they thought it was some sort of japanese ripoff thing they looked at the game they saw Huselbeck doing the music they knew this wasn't coming out of konami and they were like i'm not going to give this a chance and then they fired up agony instead that's why it was a mistake to go the japanese route with this game they should have called this game b fighter and been done with it and said Huselbeck did the music eat it Huselbeck. But also, what? What are you talking? 
I can't tell if you were serious or you're out of your mind. I'm completely serious. You're telling me this you don't think this game is game... better than any of those top tier. But no, like... I'm confused as to what your your complaint is. You're saying because they tried to make it look like a Japanese arcade game, right? That right. people weren't interested, right? Because it's called a Pitya. You're gonna buy a Pitya or Shadow of the Freaking Beast. I want to buy Shadow of the Beast every day because that's an awesome sounding name. You don't think name. a pity is a cool sounding name? No. I think it kind of is. I always thought it was kind of a cool name. No. I like I like it. I mean, listen, my thing is, I have a feeling that what happened with this thing is it, in fact, got lost in the shuffle. It, just from that that comment about it coming out the same month as Project X, Project X is a big popular game, you know? Uh, well, it is entirely possible that this came out at the worst possible second, like you said. Yeah. Coming out in the same time frame as Project X and Agony didn't do it any favors. And I, this is me personally. I like this more than uh, both those. And I will say, by too, a long shot, that all I, I, I can accept that I'm in the minority of if you have if you're looking at the shelf and you see all three games. Um, I think most people would feel more comfortable and would rather play a space shooter like Project X than a yeah. B shooter like a Pitbull. And I will say, if you look at Agony, the first level of Agony where the, that owl is going across the bay is awesome looking. It does look very good. You know, but I mean, and I think this game has a lot more on offer, and I think it's a lot more original and a lot more clever. And this is, by the way, very Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this could have if you if you'd said, listen, this is a port from a Japanese game by these guys. I'd have been, I mean, we're watching the bee fight this giant, I don't know, voodoo doll or whatever. This looks like something straight out of Akira right yeah. here. It's some crazy, yeah. weird, freaky Japanese stuff. They did a good job. So they wanted a Japanese-style game. They got it. And this is a unique game amongst the media. Now, we haven't even gone into the, uh, another interesting aspect of this game, which is the two-player option. You can play two-player hot seat on this if you want, but you can also play a unique style of two-player where the second player actually plays simultaneously the first player, they play the little B. Oh, and they can okay. do stuff as the little like B. Girlfriend mode. They don't have full reign, but they can they can sort of do stuff fire. It's neat. It's a neat it's a neat aspect of it. The only reason I know about that is because I'd actually done that with gosh somebody way back in the day just to try try what it was. It was pretty neat. Uh, so they give you the option, they give you all kinds of control options, they give you all kinds of uh, multiplayer options. It's got great sound great visuals it's too hard that's the that's the big fault of the game is the is the difficulty mm -hmm. uh, and the sad thing is a lot of people will never get to see the cool levels that come later but uh, if you're a real hot shot and I can this is one of those games where I can see someone that's really good at shooters shooter games like this getting doing good enough to get to the end or near the end and be on it because I think it's not I don't think this is a lot easier than project X oh, for no. example I no. think this is a lot easier. I think I think that they're they are they're a they're on par with each other. I think this is easier, though. You think so? I think. Remember how hard, and I don't mean Project X like the remaxed, oh, super yeah. cool version. Yeah, I'm talking right. the original I, I forgot, one. I forgot that it was remaxed. Right. Um, in this game, I was not able. This is another game, much like a lot of these R-type games, where if you die and you your weapons get bumped back, you don't have a prayer. Um, yeah. Th this is a game where you know you type in the code to get all the weapons. Which I don't believe you can actually do for real in the game. Well, I guess you can. It would it would be it would take a Superman to do it. Um, but you start off and you you can progress through the game. It's still not easy, but you still feel like you're making progress. But the minute that you die and your levels go, your weapons go down one level, you feel it. And if you die a second time, you might as well reset. You don't have a prayer. Yeah, the, and this is a that's one of the problems with this style of game. Uh, and and if you don't have a lot of those flower uh, those flowers around to collect right away. You're screwed. Yeah. One thing, uh, if you play like a game like uh, Alcon, they sort of start you with one, so you can hit the speed up right away. Because, and this is another game that could really, if you're not going fast enough, you're insta screwed. Yeah. You're insta screwed. Let's talk about the tunes in this a little bit. The music on this that we mentioned was uh, Chris Hulsbeck. Uh, Hulsbeck. He, he actually, he actually uh, got a soundtrack to this release in '92, so you can actually get this. I actually wow. saw it on sale on eBay. Interesting. Uh, uh, no, uh, get, cassette. Uh, no, no, it was a CD. Wow. Uh, get this. There there have been, according to the wiki, a, uh, someone performed the Epidia Suite with a full orchestra in 2003 at the Symphonic Game Music Concert Series in uh, Leipzig, Germany. Hmm. Oh, it's, Pretty, it's, it's, I think that's it's, home it's, of Huselbeck. So it's been performed a, over. Yeah, it's been performed a bunch of times, actually, in a bunch of different places, which is, that's pretty cool. Uh, you can, like I said, I saw the, I actually saw the, uh, the, I'm trying to remember if I wrote down the price. I saw the album on sale. It was pretty pricey. 
uh, uh, yeah, I didn't write it down, but it was it was a, it wasn't. Oh yeah, here it is. Thirty bucks in Germany. You can get you can buy a copy okay. of the CD. Okay. So not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. I paid more than that for many a video game soundtrack imported from Japan. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just to sh oh, I should mention this uh, won the Amiga Joker Best Action Game of '92 by the readers. So there were some you know some watch. I believe Joker is a German magazine, yeah. as I recall. Joker would love this. Yeah. Um, just to go into some of the reviews uh, on this. Uh, Amiga Action gave this 80%. Uh, Amiga Computing gave this uh, 67%. They, that's kind of surprising to me. They yeah. didn't like it very much at all. Amiga Format gave it a 90. Uh, Amiga Power gave it an 89. And um, let's see your CU Amiga gave it an 80. And the one gave it a 79. And here's one I've never heard of uh, Zero. Uh, I think we've talked about Zero once or twice. Uh, they gave it a 93 and, and included, it's a masterpiece, the nearest anyone's come to putting an arcade quality game on the Amiga for a long time, buy it. So there you go. Even even in 92, like you said, even though people don't want to admit it now, they were like, it's the best game to come along in a long time. They realized that the, the tide has started to change. You know, i got to say, before you get into the, to the listener reviews, I wasn't sure how you were going to go on this one, and even and despite the fact that you wrote that long tweet about hating AGA. Uh, what are you talking about? That 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 has everything to do. Right, with but I, did, I I didn't I didn't know about that until well after you'd written it, and so I didn't know. So I had played this. And I was like, I wonder what Boat's gonna think of this game. But part of me, because I know we're not neither one of us are very good at these sorts no. of games. I'm pleasantly. I'm not super surprised, but I mean, you're this, not super surprised that this game runs on an Amiga 1000. No, no, Give me a break. no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I'm 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 pleased that you're down with this game. Oh, I'm totally because down with this and game. I'm, it's funny that we had the same thought. We hear a lot about the Shadow of the Beast and the Project X and and uh, these sorts of games, uh, and your Turrican's and whatnot. But man, and this game I'd heard about, but no one no one talks about this in quiet reverence, you know. And this is one. If I may say, this is a hell of a game. It is. It's a hell it of is. a game. It covers all the bases, and if if you're good at this sort of game, you, I think you could really have a good time. It reminds me sort of of some of those. Uh, you ever play those weird Japanese like uh, they're like R type? You know the weird series where they go to those R type kind of like oh, there's derivatives, them, yeah. where they have like they're more organic mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like that's life what, force. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this sort of salamander. This sort of reminded me of games like that mm -hmm. that had that kind of. Weird. I mean, and they kind of they sort of cross genres. Of well, those. this game does it all. It does the organic stuff. It does right, the mechanical stuff. It does it all. It, it it's a real. Um, it's someone sat down with a NES mm -hmm. and was in '92 or in '90, and this they were like, "Been a Super Nintendo at this." Well, point. and they said, "You know, these are awesome. What what's what can we do?" Yeah. And this is sort of a love letter to those types of games. Now, mm -hmm. I'm no fan. I'm no big Darius guy or whatever, but I mean, I know what I are. This seems like a very nice tribute to those games and a very playable one. Yeah, yeah. We did. We got a ton of uh, user reviews. Really? This week, um, Graham W. Vebke says, "If you love shmups, this game is an eight out of ten with its gameplay and wonderful graphics. If you're a casual player, it will be very frustrating. Sounds very good, and the game and graphics just give off the feel of it being refined and polished multiple times. Yes, it's tough as nails, but I wouldn't have it any other way." You can see the game is influenced a lot by Gradius and especially Parodius <laughs> and Twinbee with the Wasp character and in-game concepts used here. I really love this game, only Project X comes close to it. Chris Fall says, another Euro-made shooter that falls into the beautiful yet flawed category. Great graphics and nice sound coupled with responsive controls are let down by the insane difficulty level that is rapidly escalated if you lose your power-ups and don't even think about playing this without auto-fire unless you're insane. Yeah, the YouTube you. video shows a varied game with lots of further lovely looking levels and further great tunes, but I doubt more than 5% of players will ever see them, even on easy mode. A sadly disappointing 5.5 out of 10. Oh, man. The Dunk, Duncan Styles says, Stunning graphics, great music, and lots of it. Smooth as silk scrolling and character movement. Frustrating, annoying, not fun. At times, there's simply too much for my brain to keep track of. The background graphics, while detailed, can sometimes mask the action. Real shame that this is such a punishing game. Cheat or watch someone else play it. Five out of ten. It's only that high because I've been banging my head against the wall. Wow, these are surprisingly low scores. The slow Norris says, beautiful to behold, frustrating to play. Five out of ten. Wow. 
Biggie oh, yeah. CTZ says, fun shooter that is just the right amount of hard. The music is extremely memorable and stays in your head for days, but unfortunately soon gets repetitive in the game. Oh, and it looks great. 7 out of 10. Uh, Bark Bit, straight out of downtown Sweden, says, bring your stick, bring your autifier, bring your A-game, and die. 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 Yes, it's one of those. What starts out as a beautiful, fun shooter with a rocking soundtrack quickly becomes a demonstration of insect extermination as your poor V gets shot out of the sky repeatedly. Choosing easy at the start seems to do nothing. I can never <laughs> get past the third <laughs> level. Yeah. If you lose a life at that point, you might as well start over, which is a shame because this could have been a superb game if it was only a bit more forgiving. Great fun for 10 minutes, though. Six out of 10. And finally, Pix, Pixels at Dawn, says, I'm generally terrible at shooters, but this is one that keeps me coming back above most of the others on the platform. It's a treat for both the eyes and ears, but definitely a challenge. I wish it was a bit easier, but I can get further than an R-Type and Disposable Hero. I also really love how the power-up system works. Well thought out. A quality game. 8 out of 10. You know, we forgot one thing that we mentioned. If you Just even at the beginning of the game, it's one of those gimmicks where if you hold your button down for a few seconds, you get like a Mega Missile. Mm -hmm. How often do you get to actually use the Mega oh, I use it all the time once I figured out how that, you can kill the boss in two hits if you do it's that. Just, it takes so long to get it going. Listen, though. when you play with the pad like a stud, uh -huh. that's how you do it. Well, you I, use I, the I didn't Mega get, I, I, the I did. I played with the game pad. That didn't help me any. Mm. That still sucks. Um, I use the Mega Missile a lot. I, I, I played this game probably for 10 or 15 minutes without the cheat, and then I fired up Lemon and got the cheat, and I enjoyed the game a lot more. And here's the thing. This is a hard game. Yes. It's extremely hard. Yes. Um, every shooter at this time was hard. You yeah. Know, this was, it, 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 it is disappointing. However, I wonder how long was it before these, these cheats, these passwords were disseminated across the web? You know, if you were a subscriber, or across the web, geez, what am I saying? Across the world of magazines. Yeah. You know, if you were a subscriber to the Joker, to the format, to the CU Amiga. I bet you had these codes. Then you can have a lot more fun with this game. You know, we had, we talk about this occasionally, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach the subject with you on this. We often talk about how some Amiga games would never make it on one of the major consoles. I see this as an easy release on either of the big this consoles. This ain't one of them, buddy. This, is, this one this would one, be right at home on any console. So are you surprised, then, that this never made the uh, jump? Uh, to any other consoles? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. There are two it, things that really stood in the way of this. Okay, I'm listening. One, um, it came out at a really bad time where they were the, the market was already flooded. Yeah, you know. And two, I think that at this point in time, the market was so flooded with titles from everybody that it might have been hard for these guys to even get a foot in the door in terms of getting a meeting with guys saying, "Hey, we've got this shooter that's just like our type." You know, the, the 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 Nintendo might have been like, yeah, we got a million of those too. We're not interested. You know, so. I will say, according to the wiki, uh, there was an unofficial Game Boy Advance demo of this release. Okay, I and can an, see un, it. But it never got, they never actually made the game. And there was right. also an, a unofficial Windows remake of the first level released in 2004, but apparently that's all they got, did on that too. So mm. someone, somewhere thought it was good. I mean... You know, we go over a lot of these um, Amiga exclusives, obviously. We've been doing this for a while. And it took us a while to get to this one. But, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a game that was more ready to go to a, a console than this. No. You know, you could put this on any console and you'd be good to go. Yeah. I, 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 I am, I mean, like I said, with the, oh, the one caveat, it's exceptionally hard. Right. And that, it does it. I mean, and I can understand the low scores for that reason. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they got every other part of this game right. In true Amiga fashion, they dropped the ball on the difficulty, and they're right. I played it on the easy too. They need something called super duper dumb guy easy yeah. for me. Yeah, or just build the cheats in. Yeah, just an option to turn the cheats on. Um, so Aaron, we did not get to do the the news this week. Uh, Nothing happened. We 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 were uh, we were unable. To I've get... got some news. Let's go. What I'll go into Aaron news. Okay. So. Um, I mentioned, gosh, probably about a month ago that I that I had been in contact with a fellow on Facebook who was selling uh, some uh, a, a gimmick that would convert a joystick port on your Amiga and a, and a mouse port into a USB port. And in said port, you could hook a variety of game uh, controllers and laser mice. I got those in this week. I made a video of it, and you can check it out on our YouTube channel. And good news, uh, it worked. It actually works pretty well. 
Uh, I have successfully installed a couple of different um, laser mouse and corded and uncorded wireless. And I've also used several game pads, including a wireless game pad I picked off Amazon for cheap. And it works. So uh, we're going to delve more into this in the computer club. But uh, just as a update, this is a working uh, gimmick. And we will uh, we will post some uh, a web page uh, to where you can check this thing out. I'm not sure if it's being formally sold right now, uh, but I think this guy's got a winner on his hands. But we'll get more into that uh, at a later date. Okay. Um, I also want to give one final plug to um, if you are in the Ireland area next week. Uh, Amiga Ireland is this coming weekend. He's got the shirt. Uh, I'm wearing the shirt. That's loud and proud. Yeah. Uh, on Saturday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning. Um, there will be a gathering over at the uh, the Radisson and Athlone. Um, uh, all the fine folks will be there. Pleasance, David Pleasance, Trevor Dickinson, Dave Haney will be there. Um, and tons and tons of Migos listeners. Uh, we're all going to be wearing our shirts on Saturday, this shirt right here. So uh, if you're around, please stop by and say hi. I'll be around uh, doing various things over the course of the weekend, including hosting the panel uh, with all of the luminaries, so it should be a good time. And uh, that means that next week on Amigos, uh, there's going to be a guest host. The Brent of ARG Presents fame will be in the host chair, and uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of fun to be had because next week's game is Data East Presents WWF WrestleMania. Brother, I will say we're going to be the Brent is excited to be step to be filling your seat for a week. We'll be uh, taping live internet internet permitting uh, a, a week from this coming sunday so i don't know what date that'll be boat but uh, uh we'll be recording it'll be basically we'll be recording amigos and sinclair after arg's normal time so it'll be nine and ten o'clock a.m respectively so check your local listings yeah yeah last week aaron it's actually been like three weeks ago that we did the uh the last patreon song challenge i would like to cons uh, consolidate I'd like to congratulate the following. I would like to consolidate <laughs> people. I would like to consolidate people into one singular person. <laughs> um, the the song was, of course, uh, "Music of the Night" from Andrew Lloyd Webber's "Phantom of the Opera." Oh yeah. Um, and uh, I did my best. I was going. I was trying to think of the guy that originally sung it, and all I could come up with was Tim Conway. I don't think it was Tim Conway. It's probably not Tim Curry. Either. I think that's his. I think that's in his range. Michael Tim. Crawford. That's his name. Tim Conway. <laughs> you know, I hear. Now I've got to see that. Yeah, he is. Um, I've only seen him on the new Scooby Doo Mysteries. I wasn't aware he had a career beyond that. You never saw Dwarf on Golf? Oh, I take it back. I have seen mm -hmm. Dwarf on Golf. I knew you were How golf. Did that boy? originally air. That was what he used to do. That bit on the show. Was that on the Carol Burnett show? I think he did, yeah. Okay. The old knees to the had, stage. Because I had yeah. some VHS tapes with the dwarf on golf. Yeah, Tim yeah. Conway was an insanely popular fellow. Of course, he was also the star with Don Knotts and the Apple Dumpling Gang movies, which are great. Is it really? Because even I just started watching that on Disney+. Plus. You're Well, he's in it. <laughs> he's the other guy that's not Don Knotts. That's right. Those guys, and they did a lot of funny ones. I used to, at least to be my favorites when I was a kid. I used to love those I guys. knew he was probably on something other than the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries. Yes. Oh, yes. Um... Anyway, Pac Billy was a winner, of course. Terry Howard, of course. Gary Heather, and Andy Craig. Congratulations! Well done to all of you, ladies and gents. And if I accidentally missed any of your names, I know it was kind of it was kind of a crazy period where I wasn't really keeping up with the uh, thing. So, uh, if I missed your name, I apologize. That was an easy one. Andy sent me a little note. He says, "I know Aaron hates the Patreon song." So Correct. make sure and tell him that it was a factor in me becoming a patron. Oh, God. I'm sure this is somewhat egotistical, but I like the idea of someone singing my name in a song. It's not egotistical at all, Andy. We hear that a lot, don't we, Boat? We do. It's disturbing to me. 90% of the people that support this show don't really like the Amiga. They just come for the dulcet tone. Why don't you just do like a... You should do a separate show where you just sing for a half hour. I've thought about doing it, but I don't want to cut you out. It would be cruel. Well, it would be cruel to make me stay. <laughs> <laughs> we did get some new supporters in right. the last couple weeks, Aaron. I want to welcome to the fold Daniel Williams, Bernard Lucas, and Jerry Dennington. All right. Welcome one and all. His name's Bernard Lucas. Remember that song? He lives on the second. No. What is that from? Avenue Q? No. Get, keep going. Okay. So, if you know this week's Patreon song, no. you can email me at john at amigospodcast.com. 
can you check that? Can you check that at work? I, I check it all the time. Because <laughs> you may not be able to get it here at the house. It's a constant check. Yeah, it's true. And I do apologize for those of you listening after the fact that did try and join us on Twitch and our internet went down right away as soon as we hit record. We did like an hour before the show. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to. Uh, Computer I've, club should be interesting tomorrow. I've got a plan. <laughs> oh and, God. Right, so. All right, here we go. Daniel Williams, Bernard, Lucas, Jerry, Dennington, Zorgla, Byron, Woho, Bjorg, Ben, Goodenson, Terry, Howard, Reflection, Simon, Lex, Captain, Crispy, Kilobytes, and Caffeine, Mike, W, Deckward, Three, Wood, Gary, Heather, Free, Lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Obstriminator, Craig McClellan, Tin, Minamigro, Amiga Retro Cast, <laughs> Bernard Quinn, Retro McCabe, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Ratter, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Livermore, and Craig, Sean Zoho, Colin Fowler, and I'm Bach Boyd, Roland Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, John Cook, Leif Kalan, Alan Kilbop, Jake Gote, Level Lord John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creepy Dead Boy Figgy, City Z, The Slow Norris, Stefan Sorgard, Mortensen, Edmund Helen, Blender 75, Christopher Hassel, Raffi Abbott, Chris Folds, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham Fabke, Lane Denson, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hawker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Dave's from the Crypt, Josh Nahan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THG, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy Hoover Child, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warnes, Pixels of Dawn, and Kyo Bjorn Barman. No idea on that one. Mm. You're was, really, you get into it though, your shoulders were... That's my dance. Is that what that's that is? Dance. I do my moves, I do my dance I like dance you're moves. cracking your back or something. Oh, no, you're, no. You cracked your back and you live a quiver. No, no. As Dusty would that's, say. That's how I do it. Is that how you do that's it? That's how I get the... I suggest you don't do it. Yeah. Well, I don't do it anymore. I'm a married man. But back in the day when I was on the dance floor... That's how I'd reel them in. Mm, mm-hmm. That's how you pull it off, is it? It's 12 or 2. Just me and you. Seven other dudes. Is that your sexy song That's you would do during song. the dance? It is. How often did that work? Oh, man. I can't. I only got 10 fingers. No. Oh. Next week, WWF WrestleMania. The Brother. Mania. Brother. Starring Zeus. You know, I've, uh, I'll have a, I've had a sneak peek at that particular game. <laughs> Brent doesn't know what's coming. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> It's going to get blindsided, brother, like a chair upside the head. Oh, the big boots. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) All right, guys, we'll see you next week. And until then, adios. adios.